I think we've got so used to hearing the Christmas story, we think of it as a, a very sweet uh, story and associate it with cute children in nativity plays. But would you want to put your baby in an animal's feeding trough? In what was probably a, an underground cave behind the inn, uh, possibly used for keeping animals in or just for storage. Certainly not the most comfortable place for a mother and newborn child. The reading we heard earlier from Luke chapter 2 tells us that there were some shepherds keeping their sheep on the hill country around Bethlehem and that an angel of the Lord appears to them and that they were terrified. I wonder if this was the same angel Gabriel, uh, the messenger angel who appeared to Mary because the angel tells them not to be afraid and that he brings them great joy. Now, what was the nature of this good news of great joy? Well, they would have been astonished because the angel tells them that the promised chosen Messiah, uh, God's saviour, who will uh, redeem them, has actually been born that very night in their very own town. Now, the people of Israel hadn't heard from God through any prophets for several hundred years. It was an incredibly bleak time for them because Israel was occupied by the Roman Empire. Uh, this was absolutely brutal. And so to hear this news from the angel that God's chosen saviour was lying in a manger just down the road must have been quite astonishing. Now, the angel's message is quite specific that this Christ child wrapped in bands of cloth and laid in an animal feeding trough. And so the shepherds go immediately uh, and just as they've been told, they find Mary with her newborn baby swaddled tightly in scraps of old cloth and lying in a wooden manger. When the angel's message is finished, he is joined by a multitude of angels, all praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favours. We like to think that this refers to ourselves, that as believers in Jesus Christ, God has favoured us and brought us peace. And of course, that is true through faith in Christ and because of Jesus' death on a cross, we are redeemed, we've been shown favour and instead of being weighed down by guilt and fear, we have peace with God knowing that all of our wrongdoings and mistakes have been truly forgiven and that we can approach our maker with confidence. So that's one way of interpreting that verse, but let's look at it another way. Glory to God and on earth peace among those whom he favours. I would think that the angel seems to be saying to these poor shepherds that God is favouring them. He has favoured them with being the first to receive this wonderful news that God has kept his promise. Luke tells us that they tell everyone in the community of this wonderful story, the appearance of angels on the hillside and their visit to a makeshift nursery. And when the shepherds go back to their sheep on the hillside, they are full of praises to God, uh, glorifying the Lord for what they have seen and heard. And so the shepherds become the first evangelists or witnesses to the birth 
of the Christ. So what is the significance of the shepherds in this story? Is it more than just a lovely plot for a school nativity play? Well, shepherds in those days really were considered the riffraff of society. They were the lowest of the low, or they were sleeping rough out on the hillside in all weathers. We hear that everyone was amazed when they heard the shepherd's story. Homeless men would have looked with awe and wonder and tears of joy at the Christ child and seeing Mary and Joseph and their newborn infant in such poverty would have been an incredibly moving sight. I think they would have seen that God cared for them too. They would have identified with this family who have no equipment with them, nothing to call their own and not even any decent accommodation to deliver their child. Later on in the Gospels, Jesus had much to say of how God favoured and blessed the poor. And we still live in a society where there are the haves and the have-nots. But what is clear from this passage in Luke's Gospel is that God appears to be favouring the have-nots. Shall we finish with a prayer? <laughs> Child of the manger, you were born in poverty with no home comforts, where your mother had to feed you, lying perhaps on bales of straw. And so, Lord, we come to you as those who are poor in spirit, acknowledging our need of you and the poverty of our hearts. And so in the midst of him, the feasting of Christmas, whether with our families or in isolation, comfort us, Jesus, with your favour and with your peace. <laughs>